kind of, let, let's rewind. You report to camp, and, and things are going great for you. I mean, you were you were in the Major League camp with St. Louis, weren't you? I was. So I was in spring training in Jupiter, Florida. I was with the Major League team. Everything's going really well. I was soaking up the opportunity to learn from so many guys, uh, so much big league experience. And then about halfway through camp, um, the whole thing went down with uh, the NBA. And then the next day after our game, we were walking off the field, and the, one of the fans yelled at us. Uh, that spring training had been canceled, and sure enough, it had. And then I was home two days later and have been here ever since. So you guys found out from a fan in the stands? Yes. Well, we knew, like, after like the whole week we were having meetings, like, the, the virus started getting bigger and bigger. And then the night before, the whole thing happened with uh, the Utah Jazz and the NBA got suspended. So we knew something was up. Like, we knew something was going to happen soon. Uh, but we the next day we went on as normal, had our game, and then as we were walking off the field, uh, the fans were giving us a standing ovation, which we thought was a little bit weird. And then I heard a fan yell that spring training had been canceled, and that's how I found out. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, pretty crazy. You look through your experience at camp. I mean, like you said, guys with so much big league experience, guys that you're, you're, you're working to be teammates with at some point, hopefully soon, but definitely in your career. What was the biggest takeaway from your experience in that in that camp setting i think there are there are a few things one is i'm close I, I can play with these guys that was one of the most important things for me was to get comfortable and be like okay like i'm, I'm good enough i can hold my own out here um two is just how consistent these guys are just yeah they're talented but they just go on go on do their business uh, day in and day out so uh they're they're very talented, but they're so professional in the way they go about it, and they're very willing to help you um, if you have any questions. So I was comfortably uncomfortable, but um, I, I felt good with how my experience went. That's awesome. You mentioned you're close. You look at last year. I mean, almost. I've got your baseball reference page up on my computer behind my phone. Um, almost seventy games with at the AAA level. What what has this journey been like to this point where you're playing half your where you know in 2019 you played half your time with more than half your time at the AAA level and now you're working with these major league guys all through spring camp I mean what's this journey been like to get to this point where you're really so close to getting to St Louis? Well, it's been fast uh, to be honest. I, I finished my career at LSU in 2017 and uh, immediately went into full season single A uh, in Peoria and. Usually guys go to rookie ball and go through a bit, a bit of development there. Uh, but I jumped straight into full season, and the following year I was in high A, and then last year triple got up to triple A. So uh, I've moved, been fortunate to move fast, so there's been adjustments along the way. There's been uh, some speed bumps but and growing pains. But uh, just try to learn on the fly and continue to develop because uh, that's what it's all about. you got to develop your skills for when you get that opportunity because uh, a lot of people get to the big leagues, but not many people stay there. This is, it's an interesting time in baseball, and even more so when you look at the Major League landscape just from Waco. I mean, Robinson, right there next to, to Midway, has, a, has a, a prospect in the, in the Pirates system. Have you gotten to talk to Braxton at all as he's gone through this journey, or have you give, been able to give him any advice um, after your experience going through kind of the same thing? I have not. Um, I, have, I have not talked to him. Um, but if I were to give him any advice, it's just keep keep a good head on your shoulders and uh, stay even keel, never get too high, never get too low, because it's, it's a marathon. It's definitely not a sprint. You're going to have really good days and you're going to have really bad days. Um, but just believe in yourself and never get too high or too low, because uh, if you believe in yourself, and then you then you got the right mindset. Since you've been home, I mean, it's been two months since there was a – a true professional live sporting event in in our country that wasn't NASCAR. What is it that you've been doing to try to, how have you had to adapt your training so that when quote unquote spring training resumes, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, you're still in just as good a shape or as close to it as you can be as you were the day you left Jupiter? I think baseball wise it's impossible i'm not I'm not able to see live pitching i'm I don't have a lot of people around here to do baseball things with uh but physically, I'm in better shape than when I left. I've been working out five or six days a week, so physically I feel great 
Uh, Baseball-wise, I'm doing what I can. Uh, there's not a ton that I, that I can do right now. Um, and I think that's the case for a lot of guys. Uh, but when I get back, or with, if and when we start, they'll give us time and they'll understand that, I'm sure, because pitchers, pitchers are going to have to get their arms ready. We're going to have to see live pitching. Uh, so there's no possible way I could be at the level baseball-wise that I was at in the middle of spring training with the major league team. Uh, but physically, um, I feel as good as I've ever felt. Is there, for the physical side, the strength and the conditioning part of it, the non-baseball aspect, have have the Cardinals been sending out workouts that you guys have been doing, or have you been just kind of what you learned at Midway, what you learned at LSU, and what you've learned in the St. Louis system and just kind of doing it on your own? A, a combination of all three. Uh, the Cardinals are really good with uh, staying in touch and helping, uh, helping us out and telling us what we need to do. They have workouts that they send to us. Uh, so I mix that in. Just basically what I do in the off season, uh, I do what they send the things that I like that help me, and then some of the things I've done in the past as well. Okay. How, I mean, outside of like you said, not being able to swing at live pitching and work on on grounders and and fly balls and whatnot. How much harder has it been to do this on your own, or is it, or, or is it something you're pretty much used to, like you said from the from the off season? Uh, workouts I'm used to from the off season. I work out on my own a lot. I have some friends come over uh, and do the workouts with me, so that that's not bad. I think the hardest thing for me is just not having that light at the end of the tunnel, the, the unknown, not knowing if I'm going to have a season, not knowing when it's going to be. Uh, so I'm just sitting here every day. It gets pretty monotonous and boring at times. Um, so I've started to give some lessons. I've started to help some kids out around town just to give me something to do and to kind of get back to some of the kids here. How rewarding has that been to start in a, in a time where, like you said, there's so much unknown, more questions than answers, to be able to give back to the community that – raised you yeah it's it feels great because i know at, at seven eight nine ten years old i would love to get lessons from a professional baseball player and i try to go back to uh being that kid who was watching the major leaguers on tv pretending i was them uh, so i know it's cool for the kids to have an opportunity i can give them some good advice as well um so it, it feels good to be able to give back to them you've I mean, we were talking before I hit record. This is a strange time for all of us. I mean, sports reporters, professional athletes, none of us who are who make a living in sports are used to being home, especially this much this time of year. How nice has it been to have some extra time to spend with, you know, your nephew, your sister, and your mom? Yeah, for sure. It's It's been nice. That's the silver lining to the whole thing is getting to experience things that I've never gotten to experience, be home so much and be with my nephew and my family. So uh, I've gotten gotten to have a Memorial Day weekend, which I've never done. So uh, little things like that have been, been nice. Getting to, I've learned to play golf a little bit. I'm not very good, but um, trying to make the most of the opportunity or mo- make the most of being home because uh, I'm sure that this won't, hopefully this won't ever happen again. So i uh, just trying to stay positive and enjoy the things that I do have instead of complaining about what we don't. One of the things you got to be home for that normally, like you mentioned, you would have been on the road somewhere, mm-hmm. um, either in the Pacific League or in the majors, um, was when your mom got the nod to go, go into the Naismith Memorial Hall of Fame. To be next to her when she got that call, how special was that for you and how proud of her were you? Oh, yeah, I'm... I'm her biggest fan. I was so happy for her. Um, and then they did the whole parade around the neighborhood and got to got to lead the parade. Uh, so that was really special and a really great day for our family and for my mom individually. What is the biggest takeaway you have taken from this time away from baseball because of this pandemic? Enjoy what you have because you never know when your last day, your last bat could be your last game. Um, so... Those ten-hour bus rides that you take in minor league baseball don't seem so bad right now because you you miss playing, you miss being with your teammates, you miss being in the clubhouse. So, uh, really makes you hold on and be and uh, be thankful for what you do have and um, never take anything for granted. Who's been your favorite major leaguer to work with in Jupiter? Oh, that's it. That's a good one. Um, I'd say really all of them, man. I, it was really cool. One day, I, like my first day out there, I was taking grounders. And, and throwing across the infield, and I was like, one of those moments where I was like, wow, I'm throwing, throwing across the infield to Paul, Paul Goldschmidt right now. That was pretty special for me. 
Um, who who's taught you the most of the of the big names in the Cardinals organization? Is it is it Goldschmidt? Matt Carpenter. Matt, he's he's a Texas boy. He went to TCU. Um, so and he he came down for a rehab last year in AAA. I got to know him a little bit there, uh, and then it was really welcoming when I went back to spring training this year. When when you are able to get going again, whenever that is, I know that there's reports Major League Baseball is planning to send its uh, economic proposal to the to the players' association this week. But we still don't know when the first time we're going to get to see a pitch is. When it does happen, how I mean, how excited are you to get to that point? Yeah, I'm not sure. You know what what's going to happen with the minor league season? What's going to happen with me? Uh, it's all out of my control, but I know just to see baseball going on again in the major leagues, I'm sure that's going to be great for people around the country, give them something to look forward to, something to be excited about, and I know I'll be excited about it as well. 